Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie bringing you some more Ubuntu news. And I have a couple of updates from news I brought to you the other day and a couple of other news items as well, all pertaining to Ubuntu. First up, the Unity desktop environment isn't dead. Their forks are planned. And by the way, folks, the other day, I did express my opinions about the Unity desktop. I made no secret of the fact that I don't like it, and I've got a couple of comments about it. But just understand, I mean no offense to anybody who does like Unity. If you do like Unity, I'm not mad at you. I'm not going to criticize. You know, that's your choice, and that's one of the great things about Linux. We have choices. But anyway, if you were upset about the discontinuing of the Unity desktop environment, well, there is good news because there are at least two groups now who are planning to do forks of the Unity code into their own Unity-like environments. And so the first group is focused on the desktop. They have something called Unit, which is based on Unity 8. So if you're upset that Unity 8 will never see the light of day, well, actually it will in just the form of unit. And then you have UB ports, which is focused on mobile. They just decided that it would be best to just do their own fork instead of going in with the unit. So it was always going to happen. The same thing that happened with GNOME 2. Remember back when GNOME 3 came out, a lot of people hated that. They wanted GNOME 2. And GNOME 2 was a good desktop. I liked it. And so uh, a lot of people, or a group of people rather, got together and forked the GNOME 2 code into Mate, which is now a very popular desktop, especially with Linux Mint. And the Gaming on Linux people did a small user survey, a small user survey, which, you know, who knows how accurate that would be with a small <laughs> sample, but uh, on their survey, they found that Unity was the third most popular desktop. So, people who are fans of Unity will be able to continue using some form of it. Next news item, Dell's new high-end all-in-one PC offers Ubuntu Linux or Red Hat Enterprise Linux in the form of the Dell Precision 5720. And by the way, I need to state I am not getting any type of compensation from Dell for advertising their product. I just I figured there was neat news that folks would want to read about or hear about. So anyway, this new high-end PC, it's an all-in-one. I'm not a huge fan of the all-in-ones. I mean, yeah, they're neat in a way because you got that big screen that you would have with a desktop system, but it's a nice compact package. But the reason I'm not a big fan is because about a year or so ago, I had to replace a hard drive in an old Apple iMac. <sighs> Let me tell you, it's not a simple matter of just popping the side off of the case, popping the old drive out, popping a new one in. you got to jump through some hoops. And so uh, the Dell maybe won't be quite as bad to work on, who knows. But uh, anyway... It comes with a 4K 27-inch display. You can power it up with either a 7th generation Core i5 clocked at 3.4 gigahertz or a Xeon E3 1200 V6 series processor. And I assume that it's going to be a faster processor than the Core i5. I haven't looked up the specs on it, but it should be very, very fast. And in its default configuration, it will come with 8 gig of RAM, but you can expand it up to 64 gig of RAM. And you have a variety of options when it comes to video cards or when it comes to graphics with, of either AMD or NVIDIA. And even though you can run it with Windows 10, you can also run it with either Ubuntu 16.04 long-term support or Red Hat Enterprise Workstation version 7.3. And... It tells you here about how to get either one of these loaded on. Just go to the computer landing page, click on the Customize and Buy button, and select your operating system. Base price, $16.99. So, yeah, not too bad of a deal. 
still a better deal than what Apple would be. Next news item, Ubuntu 17.04, new privacy feature in Network Manager stops some Wi-Fi adapters from working, and that's because of the MAC address randomization. And so according to this blog, this privacy feature can cause some USB Wi-Fi adapters to stop working while they used to work with older versions of Network Manager. In other words, Ubuntu 16.10 or older. So the purpose of this privacy feature is to get your computer to report a new random MAC address whenever you connect to a Wi-Fi network. And this is especially useful when you connect to public Wi-Fi networks so that the operators cannot identify you when you connect multiple times. And the downside of this privacy feature is that some USB Wi-Fi adapters misbehave when Network Manager tries to change your MAC address repeatedly. And the result is that those USB Wi-Fi adapters cannot connect anymore to the Wi-Fi network. And so here, this guy gives his original report, and here he gives the fix for it. And so what you got to do is go into the networkmanager.conf file and add that one line and then restart the network manager. And then, of course, there's some comments here. Congratulations, you just released an Ubuntu version that will not allow most of the users to connect to wireless networks. This is unacceptable. Yeah, OK. <laughs> well, you know, bugs happen. And you got to remember, this is not a long term support release of Ubuntu. And I learned a long time ago to just not deal with the non-LTS versions of Ubuntu because I just was having too many problems with them. And, you know, it's probably not quite as bad now, but several years ago when I first started playing with Ubuntu, it seemed like their quality control was just horrible. And even like, I mean, 10 years ago when they released a long-term support version even, that would be buggy. And, you know, they would release back in, or back in those days anyway, they would release a long-term support version. And then over the next month, you would have so many updates that they were basically rebuilding the entire operating system. So that was problematic enough. And then you go and try to play with the non-long-term support versions and you never knew what you were getting, right? So I just gave up on the non-LTS versions. And now for the most part, you know, with rare exceptions, I just stick to the LTS versions and I have a lot less trouble that way. The last one here is from the Life on Linux website, an interview with Ryan Sipes from System76 about Ubuntu and their future. And again, I get no compensation from System76. Just a neat news story. But anyway, uh, you can read here his interview and it's got a couple of interesting points there. Uh, the question, will System76 be sticking with Ubuntu or are you weighing up other Linux distribution options? And System76 is sticking with Ubuntu for the foreseeable future, right? And he goes on to say about how, yeah, they considered other options after the news broke that Ubuntu would be getting rid of Unity, but they decided to just go ahead and stick with it. They'll be shipping Ubuntu with GNOME on their computers and they'll also add some of their own extensions and theming on top of it. Question, finally, to all the people claiming that the Linux desktop is now dead or dying, what do you have to say? Well, this guy says, well, the Linux desktop is certainly not dead. And he tells about the numbers of computers that they do ship loaded with, with Ubuntu Linux. So... A lot of reasons for it. Developers prefer Linux a lot of times to Mac or Windows. And he says, hey, I don't see any indication that the Linux desktop is dying. If anything, it's thriving. So, good news there. Will it ever be the year of the Linux desktop when Linux usage exceeds that of Windows? Well, who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. We'll keep our fingers crossed. But anyway, that is it for the Linux in the news and the Ubuntu in the news. If you like the videos, be sure to like and subscribe. And also, a new feature, which you will see in the comments below, there will be a link to my Amazon affiliate bookstore. So if you need to buy a book 
or if you need to buy anything from Amazon, be sure to click on that link. Anything you buy, once you click on that link, even if it's not something listed in the bookstore, it helps me out, helps provide me the incentive to continue making great videos for you. Okay, so that is it. And I do thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.